Yo, 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 welcome to another video. Another one. My name is Ari, I'm a product designer based in Sydney, Australia, and in this video, we're gonna talk about cart sorting. As usual, if you're impatient, is it impatient? Hey Siri, is it impatient? Impatient. As usual, I've got all the timestamps down below if you're a little bit impatient and you can just jump into a section that you like or you could just follow along and watch the entire video as we go through it together. With that said, let's continue to the actual video. Cool, what is it? What is a cart sorting exercise? It's basically a UX research method to understand how your users might view, label, and categorize your content. And based on the results that you get back, you can make data-driven decisions around how to shape your sitemap and information architecture. Now, when do you do cart sorting? For example, when you're just starting a brand new app or website, when you're testing, redoing, or improving a current app or website, or when you have new additional content that you wanna to add to a existing app or website. There are different types of research methods as well. Based on your project team size and the amount of time that you have, there are different ways to conduct the card sorting exercise in order to suit your needs very specifically. Let's go through some of them. Let's start with moderated testing. This is where you sit down and do the test personally with the end user. This could be either face-to-face -face or through a live chat, kind of like Zoom or Google Hangouts. In the moderated test, you walk the user through the task, ask questions, and walk them through the tasks. Generally speaking as well, for tests like this, the participants are usually handpicked more carefully either by yourself or it's been outsourced to a firm that does this professionally. The pros of doing a moderated test are you can ask different follow-up questions tailored to this specific situation. You can watch and learn from your users expressions and body language because of the quality of the participants that you recruit for this test and the fact that you could ask follow-up questions you get to run fewer test sessions. The cons of doing moderated testing are things like it's definitely more expensive than an an unmoderated test. It's very time consuming. You have to pick specific time slots throughout your week and block them out and do the actual test physically with the user. So it actually physically requires you to be there. It takes you away from your day-to-day -day work for a couple of days and blocks you from doing anything else. The process of studying the results is very manual. The process of creating your reports is also very manual. In a lot of different cases, you're responsible for setting up the test environment and coming up with the equipment, which can be very time consuming as well. And obviously, if you want to do the test in a different geographical location, you're going to have to do this online on Zoom or Google Hangouts or something like that. Now, let's also talk about unmoderated testing. This is where you would use some sort of digital tool in order to conduct your test. A lot of these digital tools allow you to just use their panel of participants in order to do your recruiting, or you could come up with your own recruit and send them through the digital platform in order to complete the test. The pros of unmoderated testings are, well, it's a lot cheaper than moderated testing. It's basically less time consuming you basically just set and forget and come back to it once the test is done. And although studying the results can be a little bit manual, all of these platforms have a reporting system that provides these chunks of information for you nicely laid out so it's quite easy to consume. It's great for smaller teams with a smaller budget. You don't really have to worry about setting up the test environment as all of that is usually taken care of for you. And you can very easily test in different geographical locations. Now the cons of unmoderated testings are things like the tasks and questions that you come up with are usually predefined prior to the test. So you don't necessarily have the chance in order to refine your questions based on a participant. So it is fairly generic. If the participant gets stuck on a question, you don't have the opportunity in order to understand what's going on and maybe help them out a little bit there. So you might end up with incomplete tests. You don't get to see people, so you don't really get to study their body language. And also if you've made a mistake in one of your questions, then that's a bit of a disaster as well. However, in order to make up for the unmoderated test downfalls, what we usually do is that we hire or recruit more participants to do the test. I usually recommend unmoderated tests if you have less time, you're on a budget, and you're a part of a smaller team or even like a solo team. And I usually recommend moderated tests if you have a bigger team, bigger budget, dedicated testing equipment, and testing environment. Now, let's talk about the different types of card sorting. And believe it or not, yes, there are different types. There is open card sorting, there is closed card sorting, and there is a hybrid of the two. With the open card sorting, you basically hand a bunch of cards to the participant and ask them to categorize them based on the way that it makes the most sense to them. After they've categorized all the cards into different groups, you then ask them to name each group. Doing an open card sorting test is usually good if you have unusual names that you really want to test out. If you're doing this test on a brand new website that doesn't have an existing architecture, 
picture or sitemap. Or if you want to improve your current sitemap and you just want to test whether or not it still makes sense. The closed cart sorting test is when you have a predefined categories and you hand over a bunch of cards to your participants and ask them to put them in the category that they think they belong to. This is usually a very good follow up to your open test. It's also really good if you test in the current information architecture or even when you're adding new elements to an existing information architecture. Now let's talk about hybrid card sorting. The idea of a hybrid card sorting is that you have some predefined category names. However, you allow the participant to also add their own category names if they really wanted to. This is usually very good if you check in the language on the current site map or architecture. You want to rename a bunch of different categories on your current architecture or adding new elements to a current structure that you have. Now let's talk about task creations for your participants. Obviously you have to come up with a scenario or a task in order for your participants to follow through with this entire architecture or exercise. I usually follow these steps. I first come up with a scenario, something like imagine you're in the market to purchase a new bed set. When you ask questions, you want to make sure that you're being non-directive. Prior to the card sorting exercise, you want to come up with an explanation of what card sorting is and why the participant is doing it and how they could be helpful for our product. When you do have tasks or questions for your participant, try to be not really leading. You also want to use clear terminology tailored for your specific audience. And once you have your questionnaires and tasks ready to go, including your cards you always want to do a pilot test just to make sure that a colleague or a friend can get through the entire test without too many hiccups now the final thing that i want to talk about is the length of the test and the number of different participants that you need in order to get some useful results back so first let's talk about how long a test should be honestly speaking this one really depends on the complexity of your project however here are a few different key points people's attention span dies after 15 to 20 minutes so try to keep the actual length of the test around that 15 to 20 minute mark if you can. In order to see how long your test takes, again, run a pilot with a friend or a colleague and just time the entire test and see how long it takes them to get through the entire thing. And based on that, you could modify your test in order to add or remove some time or tasks from it. How many participants do you need? A simple answer over here is as many as you need in order to start creating and seeing patterns and gain some confidence in your choices. However, some good rules of thumbs are for moderated tests, Tests, something between five to eight participants would put you on the right path. For unmoderated tests, anything between 15 to 20 people to allow more room for human error. And at this point, if you don't get satisfactory results, then you just want to add participants beyond that. Cool. Now that we got that out of the way, let's go to the computer and put together a card sorting exercise. All right. Welcome to the computer. For me, I make my card sorting exercises on Optimal Workshop as well. This is what I also used for the tree test an exercise and if you haven't seen that I will leave a link down below check it out when you get a chance in the other video I talked about this as well but if you do go to the pricing section you notice that the price for this is actually quite high but there is also a free account that you could use in order to follow this tutorial now one thing that I do for the price is that I usually subscribe to the individual tier and once I'm done with it I usually stop my subscription and the other thing that I do is that I pass this cost to the client in order to not have to pay $200 and yeah if you do go month to month it is $200 per month for this tool as not every project really uses this tool. With that out of the way once you created the account you will land on a page like this and we'll come back to this page in just a second. Let's go to this list. This is the list that we gather through research, content gathering and auditing in order to create our sitemap and information architecture. We created this list while we were going through the sitemap video. Again, I will leave a link to that down below. But generally speaking, you would come up with something like this. Each of these gray areas are a specific category. So we've got the shop, we've got the about, we've got the blog help account and legal checkout and miscellaneous. It is generally easier to manage a test if you test for a specific section at a time. So for our example, I'm going through the shop section of the architecture only so only the stuff over here a couple of notes before we continue we want to run the card sorting test ideally prior to putting our sitemap together to come up with our first draft we then want to validate our card sorting test by running a tree testing exercise and then after that and that's how we come up with 
the sitemap and the information architecture. I'm saying that since within our tutorials, we kind of worked backwards. With that out of the way, creating an actual card sort is quite simple using optimal workshops. You simply just go over here, start a card sorting exercise, and then it'll take you to a page like this where you could start creating your labels. However, what I've done, so that you don't have to watch me type each of these items over here, I've gone ahead and filled this out prior to the screen recording. And basically that's just all of our items from the mattress. I have modified them a little bit because original on its own wouldn't really make sense. So you could see that over here, I've gone through and I've named it the original mattress, hybrid mattress, timber bed base. So I've been a little bit more deliberate with what each of these items are. You could add, of course move them around. You've got a bunch of options over here where you could, you know, add a tooltip description. You could add card imagery and a bunch of other options. I want to walk you guys through a few of these tabs above as well. So if you go underneath categories, this is where you get to choose whether you want to open, closed or hybrid test. If you do go for example closed then you have to come up with your category names as well but i'm just going to leave this one as open messaging basically refers to the instructions the welcome messaging and the thank you screen that the user sees as they go through the test you'll see what that looks like in just a second questionnaire is for you to go ahead and screen your participants so this is where you're tapping into the participants of optimal workshop it allows you to basically allow a bunch of people in or throw a bunch of people out you could come up with with pre-study questions, you could come up with post-study questions. So it's, it's, it's a pretty cool tool to have. And above that, we've got the settings. There's a bunch of stuff over here. You could go through them in your own time. Design, you could basically brand this so that it suits your company or, or your project a little bit better. Through recruit, this is how you do the recruiting down here. You, you could use optimal workshops participants, or you could just simply send this link out to the people that you want to test with. Once your test is actually launched and people complete your test, this results page gets populated with graphs and information and, and I'll show you what that looks like through their demo account in a second. So let's have a look at the demo account, which is right over here. You can have a participant view. So once you launch this test, this is what you get. Participant can go through it. They'll see the welcome message. They can go through the questionnaire that you put together and then they could start putting these into specific categories and they can simply rename the categories. They could view the instructions again they could leave comments or and once they're done they could just click on finished on the other hand once every participant is done then you could look at the studies down here and it breaks it down for you there's an overview tab where it gives you a quick overview of everything and there's an analysis tab where you could dig a little bit deeper further down into each of these cards and study them further and that's basically it for card sorting i hope you guys enjoyed this video as well let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below don't forget to follow Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. I have left all of the links down below in my Linktree account, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.